not listening. But let me finish it for the Christians, though, since we're on this topic. For you Christians, I want you to see how evil, merciless, inhumane this religion is. When Muhammad lusted for his adopted son's wife, Zainab bin Jash. I was hoping you'd give the uh, historical yeah, background because here. I want to explain. I want the Christians to hear this, and I hope the Muslims have eyes to see and ears to hear by the power of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Look, you, you got the request here. Tell the whole tell story. The whole story. Okay. Oh, he's telling, good, good. Story. he's telling the whole story. He's telling the whole story. I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit convicting you, you're going to see how evil your prophet was. <laughs> Why would he want you to tell no, the whole I'm good, story? No, I'm good, because the Spirit's working on him, because <laughs> he right. says it's past Maghrib, and he still wants to stay. He wants it. So the Spirit's convicting him, folks. Pray for Abdul Rahman. He's going to come to Jesus. Guys, notice how evil and humane this religion is, because he's always a mercy, mercy unto mankind. Muhammad adopted Zayd, and he said to the people, now why did he do it? Understand, look at Zayd's fidelity, how much he loved Muhammad. He goes, I'd rather be a slave than return free with my father and paternal uncle. Muhammad was so touched, he goes, from now on, this man is my son, he's not my slave. So they called him Zayd ibn Muhammad. This is in the commentators. Ibn Kathir, Jala, you, you name it, they admit this. Okay, years later, and here's what's ironic. Muhammad married Zayd to Zainab bin Jash. She refused. She didn't want to marry him. She thought that she was of higher class than him. Muhammad insisted. In 33 verse 36, read the commentators again. It says that a person, a believing man or woman, has no choice in a matter when Allah and his messenger have decided a thing. In other words, he brought a revelation forcing her. You got no say so in the matter. I want you to marry him. So notice, Muhammad forced her to marry a man she didn't want to marry. It says Muhammad went to visit Zayd and Zainab at Zayd's home, his son. Zayd wasn't there. Zainab wasn't veiled. He didn't go inside the house. Zainab saw him. He didn't go inside the house. He told her basically, tell Zayd I was here. As he walked away, she heard him say, praise be to Allah who turns the hearts. Understand what that means. He just blamed his God for causing him to lust for a married woman, the wife of his son. Praise be to Allah, she heard him say, who turns the hearts. Now, she was flattered by that. She actually liked it. The prophet finds her attractive. But let me finish this point. Zayd comes back and says, Wait, wait, hold on. Yes. Before, wait, before you move on, we need that to sink in, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Muhammad goes over to see his adopted son. He's instead greeted by... His adopted son's wife, who happens to be one of the most beautiful women in yes, Arabia sister. and who's wearing next to nothing at the time. Muhammad walks away. Praise Allah. Praise Allah who causes the hearts to turn. Muhammad believes that it's been revealed to him by Allah that as soon as he sees this hot woman practically naked, Allah wants her to go yes. to me. Yes, exactly. Allah wants her to be mine. And so... Isn't it amazing? Isn't it a, 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 a miraculous coincidence that as soon as I see this woman practically naked, I suddenly get this revelation that Allah is telling me she's for me. Mm -hmm. What a quinky dink. Oh, this oh, is yeah. a guy that, sure. and, and, well, uh, but it gets worse. They wanted the whole story. But, but let's let go. me let's finish it, though, because it's going to get worse. So then Zayd came and told Zainab what happened. She goes, oh, Muhammad came. And he said, why didn't you invite him in? He goes, I did invite him in. He didn't want to come in. He goes, what else did you hear? And then she goes, I heard him say, praise be to Allah who turns the hearts. It says, these are in Tabari. These are the Muslim sources, not Christian sources. Tabari said, Zayed realized Muhammad lusted after his, his wife. Notice Zayed's faithfulness to this Antichrist. He didn't get angry. You know what he did? He went to Muhammad and says, Ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah, I will divorce her for you. Guys, understand the devotion of this man to Muhammad. This man chose slavery. He chose to be a slave to Muhammad rather than freedom. This man was also willing to divorce his wife to satisfy the lust of his adopted father. Do you understand? The man? This man showed more love and devotion to this Muhammad than Muhammad did to his son. Muhammad was embarrassed. He goes, no, 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 keep your wife. Zayd divorced her anyway. And then the verse came down, 33, 37, rebuking Muhammad. Muhammad, you hid in your heart what we're about to reveal to you. You told Zayd, who was shown favor by you, keep your wife. And you're hiding in your heart what Allah was about to manifest. You understand what that verse is saying? You are hiding in your heart the tr your true intention. You did want her, but you feared the people rather than Allah. That's what 3337 says. You are more afraid of the backlash of people for taking your adopted son's wife than you were afraid of Allah who had decreed this woman for you. And then it says, and the reason why we did this, Muhammad, we did this so that you can set a precedence, an example, for other adoptive fathers 
that they can marry the divorced wives of their adopted sons if they so choose. So guys, understand this. And you got to understand this. We got to do a whole session on this. Why did Allah decree lust in Muhammad's heart for his adopted son's wife? There was a reason. It was important. Here's the reason. So that Muhammad would be an example for other adoptive fathers that if their adopted sons divorced their wives, the adoptive fathers could marry them. Now understand how sick and perverted that is before I, I go I, to the next I, one. I, I, I want to read the actual verse so people yes. can say that is exactly what Allah is saying. Let me, make it, let me come and then you read the verse. Understand how sick and perverted it is. Guys, understand. You, you are an adopted father. Here, we'll take vocab. His son, his adopted son, grows up and marries a woman. He has children with her. That's his now daughter-in-law. His son divorces his wife and then vocab marries her. After vocab went over, saw her practically naked. And the son's like, Dad, did you see my wife practically naked? Vocab's like, yes, son. And wow, Allah really causes yeah. the hearts to turn. No, even, even, let's say, even just to put, put religion aside. Yeah. Let's put religion aside. A man marries his adopted son's divorced wife. And now that wife becomes his adopted son's mother. Tell me how sick and perverted this religion is. But now read the verse so again we can finish it. So, again, according according to the story here, it wasn't simply it wasn't simply that that Muhammad was lusting after this woman. Um, and Muslims need to understand according to the Quran here. Muslims are the ones who need to understand that Allah had a purpose behind Muhammad marrying the divorced wife of his own adopted son. Allah had, a, Allah had a purpose. M Muslim says, I left Islam because of this channel. Glory to Jesus Christ. Keep praying for his work, for this channel. Pray for us. Mm -hmm. Muslims are leaving. Glory to Jesus. But go ahead. Okay, so uh, there's a reason, right? Um, because everyone's what because pretty much everyone down through history, every culture has frowned upon marrying the divorced wife of your own adopted son that's frowned upon hey, again you, think you. of vocab and his little kids if you watched islamicize me you saw vocab's adopted kids adopted sons in the video imagine one of them grows up gets married um and then vocab marries his wife after him right that that's uh that's really really creepy well guess what it was creepy to the people of muhammad's time too it was creepy to the muslims it was creepy to the non-muslims um, so what's Muhammad going to do? Well, as usual, he received a revelation. He received a revelation. And it turns out that Allah had a very important reason. It wasn't just Muhammad wanted this woman. He saw how beautiful she was. It wasn't that. It wasn't that Muhammad had reached a stage in his life where he just believed he could, he could take anything he wanted and it would be justified by Allah. It wasn't that. No, Allah had a very important reason for making Muhammad do this, even though Muhammad didn't want to. Muhammad didn't want to, but Allah had to make him. So here it goes. Sam's already, ta Sam's already talked about this. We're just reading it yeah. so we understand we'll this, is, this is what it actually said. Surah 33, verse 37 of the Quran. And when you said to him, to whom Allah had shown favor, so when Muhammad had said to Zayd, and when you had said to him, to whom Allah had shown favor, and to whom you had shown favor, keep your wife to yourself, and be careful of your duty to Allah, and you concealed in your soul what Allah would bring to light, and you feared men, and Allah had a greater right that you should fear him. But when Zayd had accomplished his want of her, meaning he kicked her to the curb because Muhammad wanted her, we gave her to you as a wife so that there should be, here's the reason, so that there should be no difficulty for the believers in respect of the wives of their adopted sons when they have accomplished their one of them. In other words, once they've, once they've divorced them. So Allah says, Muhammad, it was very important of you to marry the divorced wife of your own adopted son. Why? So that there should be no difficulty for the believers in doing that. Do, do you catch that? According to the Quran, according to Allah, Allah really needed Muslim men to know that it's okay to marry the divorced wives of their own adopted sons. They didn't get it. They didn't understand that they were allowed to take the wives of their own adopted sons. They just didn't get it. They were struggling with this. So Allah, now notice, uh, Muslims, couldn't couldn't Allah have just said it, right? Couldn't he have yeah. just said, by the way, guys, yeah, it's, yeah. it's okay. Uh, so a couple things here. One, how many people actually struggle with this? Raise your hand in the chat if you actually struggle with, man, I'm really wondering if I need to... Uh, if I need to uh, marry the divorced wife of my own adopted son, how many? I've never met a person who struggles with that, right? So that's one problem. Who is who is this addressing here, other than Muhammad? Precisely. That's one. Um, two, 
if it was a problem for someone, let's assume there were people back then, uh, why couldn't Allah just reveal it in the Quran? Yeah. Guys, it's okay. Go ahead. So so that, that's two. Why couldn't he just do that? Three, um, are you serious? This is why Muhammad needs to do it. So it, it's so important to Allah that he can't just say it. It's so important. It's such a huge issue in the moral realm that everyone needs to understand this so much that Allah can't simply say it. He needs to force Muhammad to do it. And then what's the result for Muhammad? Well, gosh darn it, I just have to go out and marry Why the divorced one. Why are you forcing one. me, Allah? I have to marry this beautiful woman that I've seen practically naked and who I got amazingly attracted to. I what torture! To I have to do it so that so, so for the good of my people. Uh, what torture, Allah? You're making me sacrifice for my people. Oh, I'm doing this yeah. for my fellow. I'm going to go... Vicarious marriage. Have sex with this beautiful woman over and over and over again, sometimes all my wives in one night, because... Because of my my fellow my my yeah. fellow Muslims, they need to understand that this is okay. It's okay, guys. If you see your adopted son with this beautiful woman, and you see her practically naked, oh, and your son torture. really looks the up pain. to you, and he finds out you've been lusting after her, and he wants to hand her over to you, it's okay, guys. Go ahead, take her. Hump away. This is Islam. That's the revelation of Allah. That's the. <laughs> this is what Allah yeah. has yeah. revealed. And on top of all of this, so number four. Number four, that's not even enough. Yes. In addition to all of that, in order to justify his relationship with this woman, which again was frowned upon by everyone forever, he has to abolish adoption Why don't you so wait, that there's man? no... Okay, go ahead. What's your excitement, okay. bro? I know you want to... Come on, hold I on. get excited, dude. I get excited. I understand you want to expose, but hold on. Because I want them to see. <laughs> I'm going to tell the whole story. Okay, oh, we'll tell it. Story. Guys, we'll did tell you catch? He gave it away. Up. He let the cat out of the bag. Shh. Here's what then gets really sickening. The jury, the jury will will ignore everything <laughs> I, right. I said af, a, a, after. Strike that point from three. the record. Okay, now here's where it gets really sick. Here's what it gets. Okay, so now Muhammad, the hero that he is, sacrificed by marrying his adopted son's divorced wife to set a precedence for others. Sacrifice, mind you. But then it gets worse. People started mocking Muhammad. This is again Ibn Kathir and the rest. I'm not making it up. It says that people started attacking Muhammad. He took his son's his son's wife to bed, his son's divorced wife to bed, because Zayd was called Zayd ibn Muhammad. Guess what, folks? That's when chapter thirty-three, verses four and five, and chapter thirty-three, verse forty was revealed. It said, "Muhammad is not the father of any of you men. Stop calling Zayd his son." And then thirty-three, four and five says. Stop calling adopted sons your sons. That's a saying of your mouth. They are not your children. They're your brothers, your freed slaves. Wait, 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 wait. Muhammad, you said that the reason why you married your adopted son's divorced wife is so you can set the example for other adoptive fathers to do likewise. But now you're telling me adoption is abolished. Zaid was never your son, so it was wrong for you to call him your son. So what in the world are you talking about that you did this to be an example for future adoptive fathers when you your God knew, I won't say Muhammad knew, your God knew he was going to abolish adoption. So what example did you set for a practice that your God had already planned in eternity to abolish even before you married your adopted son's divorced wife? Now why is this damaging apart from how immoral and evil this action is? Because remember, folks, the Quran is eternal, according to the Sunnis. Meaning, these verses of the Quran existed eternally. They're uncreated. Meaning, before creation, Allah had already determined that Muhammad would take his adopted son's divorced wife and had already determined in eternity to abolish adoption. This was already determined because it's part of the uncreated Quran before creation came into being he already knew this and went ahead did it anyway justifying his prophet's lust for a married woman lust for a married woman justifying that his prophet would marry a married woman who was divorced unlawfully in the sight of true god thereby forcing her to commit ad adultery and then to save face he abolishes adoption robbing millions of children in the muslim world of ever having folks to call their parents and barren women 
from ever having a child of their own because Muhammad abolished adoption to save face. And you want us to believe this man is a prophet of God and Allah is not the devil himself and that Allah is merciful and Muhammad is a mercy unto mankind. Let me show you what Jesus says about Muhammad's God. Let me show you what Jesus says about Muhammad's God. Matthew 5, 27, 28. You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I tell you that everyone who gazes at a woman to lust after her has committed adultery with her in his heart. But 33, 37 says, Allah is the one who put that lust for a married woman in Muhammad's heart. So Allah of Muhammad cannot be the God revealed in Jesus. He is a demon, if not Satan himself. But then now watch this. Matthew 5, 31, 32. It was also said, Matthew 5, 31, 32. It was also said, whoever shall put away his wife, let, let him give her a writing of divorce. But I tell you that whoever puts away his wife, except for the cause of sexual morality. Remember, Zayd did not put Zainab away for sexual morality. Did not do that except for sexual morality, makes her an adulteress. And whoever marries her, when she is put away, commits adultery. So Zayd made Zainab an adulteress, and Muhammad became an adulterer who made her an adulteress by marrying her. But it's all Allah's fault because Allah put that lust in his heart to do this. So Allah and Muhammad stand condemned to hell by Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Go ahead. Well, notice, Sam, this, is all, this was all a side topic. Guys, why, why were we talking about all of this? Because the Muslims challenged us on the issue of adoption. Sam just mentioned it in passing, right? We mentioned it in passing when Sam was given the historical background of the story about Muhammad when he was a child and Muhammad's um, sort of foster mother said that she thought he was demon-possessed. She thought Muhammad, even when he was a little kid, was actually possessed by a demon. Right. So Sam and explaining yeah. the situation with the foster mother, why he had this foster family, uh, explain, says a little bit about adoption. We get challenged by a Muslim. Ah, Islam, Islam didn't abolish adoption. And then it's actually Muslims that tell the whole story. And all of this you've got right here by, because Muslims are want, want us to give all the details. How you feeling now, Muslims? Now, now that we ha now that we have what the Quran actually says, what's in your sources? Are you happy that everyone learned learned more about your prophet? Right? See, we're we're happy when people learn more about Jesus. We're happy, right? When people learn more about Jesus, we're like, yay! This person learned even more about Jesus. Um, I find Sam that Muslims just don't want people to learn the tr don't learn the truth about Muhammad. They don't want people to learn the facts about Muhammad. Even if we had said it without, even if we had explained everything without any. Um, without any added commentary, if we just explain the situation, look what look what uh, look what uh, look what Sam here said. I am a Muslim, and I have a problem with that. Beautiful. That is good, and we, we respect you for that. We res we respect you for that, Sam, for for acknowledging that th this is a problem. This is a problem, right? Um, and we can see. And, and guys, by the way, this isn't the first time, right? What what did Aisha say? What did Aisha say? Your Lord hastens, hastens to fulfill your desires. To fulfill your hastens desires. Rushes. She noticed any time Muhammad sees something and he wants it. Oh, look at that! I want that over there. Oh, I want more girls. Oh, I want this nine-year. I want this six-year-old. Th this is what I want. Any time Muhammad wants anything, I want more sex life. Whenever I want. Allah reveals a revelation. Allah gives a revelation saying, yeah, Muhammad, you want that, you get it. Oh, the Quran says you can have only four wives, but you want more? Well, that's no problem. Allah's given you a special revelation, Muhammad. Oh, Muhammad, you took an oath to your wives to stop having sex with your slave girl? Ho, ho, ho. Uh, Allah's telling you now to break that oath, Muhammad. You get right back in there and start humping that slave girl again. Allah, Allah wants you to break your oath. That's in the Quran. That's Surah 66. Opening verses of Surah 66. Read yeah. the historical background. This I, is some sick stuff. I don't think the, is the maybe even the Christians, I don't blame them because they don't study Islam mm -hmm. as well. Uh, I mean, because, you know, I mean, you need to know your faith. So it's hard to study two religions. I don't I don't think the Muslims understand the implication of this if they believe the Quran is uncreated. Mm -hmm. Let me bring it out real quickly. And we got to come back to the subject. Yep. Guys, understand what what you basically have to believe. Chapter 66 of the Quran is supposed to be uncreated. It's eternal. Chapter 65, that sanctions marriage, marrying and div divorcing prepubescent minors before they've even had their menstruation. That passage is eternal, uncreated. It's always existed. The, these verses where it talks about marrying your adopted son's divorced wife and then abolishing adoption. 
they're all supposed to be eternal because the Muslim position, the official Sunni position, and I even asked the Shia, do Shias believe it? They said yes. Well, I don't know if that's all Shia, but anyway, the official Sunni position, what they call the position of Ahl al-Sunnah wa Jama'ah, the Quran is the uncreated speech of Allah. It's beginningless. Do you understand what that means? All these stories in the Quran, all these characters, all these individuals, all these commands have eternal existence. In other words, in eternity before creation, Allah has already in mind Zayd's marriage to Zainab, Zayd divorcing Zainab so that Muhammad could marry Zainab so he can set an example for other adopted fathers, then abolishing adoption. And he already has in mind Muhammad lusting for one of his concubines and then violating his, his promise to one of his other wives by taking the concubine into the house of his other wife on the day assigned to that wife so he can have sex with that concubine. All of this was part and parcel of the uncreated speech of Allah which means that in eternity, Allah is busy thinking about all these events, how to satisfy Muhammad, how to create these individuals to bring about all these things related to Muhammad's life. And you want us to believe the Quran is truly of God? And Muhammad is... A you mean Allah had nothing better to do than think about, yeah, you know what? I'm going to create Zayd so he can marry Zainab, so he can divorce Zainab, so my, my prophet can marry Zainab, so he can be an example for adopted, adoptive fathers, and I'm going to ad abolish adoption to save my prophet from further humiliation, and I'm going to get busy composing a passage, which is supposedly eternal, so I, re I really don't compose it, it's always existed, where Muhammad can violate his oath that he made to Hafsa because he embarrassed himself by taking his concubine to her bed in her house to have sex with her because he can control himself. And this is what Allah has been occupied with in eternity. And this is all part of his miraculous revelation, the Quran. Really? Guys, did... Did did I mean it's so many it's so many problems, but that 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 key issue right of Muhammad, why are you marrying the divorced wife of your own adopted son after you're the one who caused the divorce by lusting after her? And Allah's response is, Muhammad has to do this because it's such an important issue for Muslims. They have to understand that it's okay to marry the divorced wives of their adopted sons. Oh, and by the way. Adoption is abolished, so this issue will never will never come up ever, and eternally abolished because it existed in eternal creation. Yeah. So Allah, in His eternal word, says the reason Muhammad has to jump on his adopted son's wife is because other Mus all the Muslim community and all future generations of Muslims need to understand that it's okay to marry the wives of their adopted sons, and in the same eternal revelation, there is no more adoption. So it's a situation that's never going to happen. So, <laughs> Muhammad, why are you doing that? Because Allah wants you all to know that it's okay. Muhammad, is this situation ever going to arise again? No, because Allah had to justify me doing it. And so there is no, there is no adoption anymore. So the situation is never going to arise. Again, you to add to this, to show how evil and immoral this religion is, remember the implication of the Quran is uncreated. That means all these events were predestined. Allah predestined Muhammad to lust for a married woman. The Hadith confirm Allah predestines people to desire and want to commit adultery. Guys, the Muslim God deliberately predestines people to have adulterous desires and then either will allow them to act upon those adulterous desires or constrain them. Where am I getting this from? Sahih Muslim, number 6421. Guys, pay attention. And you're telling me that this doesn't make a strong case that Muhammad is possessed as well as insane? Chapter 64, verse 21, Sahih Muslim. Verily, Allah has fixed, guys, pay attention. Allah has fixed, decreed the very portion of adultery which a man will indulge in and which he of necessity must commit or there would be no escape from it. Let me repeat it again. Maybe I said it too fast. Verily, Allah has fixed the very portion of adultery which a man will indulge in and which he of necessity must commit. Oh, but that's Sai Muslim. It's not Bukhari. Okay. Sahil Bukhari, Sahil Bukhari, volume 8, number 609. Sahil Bukhari, volume 8, number 609. Narrated Ibn Abbas. I did not see anything so resembling minor sins as what Abu Huraira said from the Prophet who said, Allah has written for the son of Adam his inevitable share of adultery, which he is aware of it or not. 
So Allah has de de determined the adultery that a person must commit. The adultery of the eye is looking at something which is sinful to look at, like Muhammad did at Zainab. Allah did fix that for Muhammad. And the adultery of the tongue is to utter that which is unlawful to utter, which Muhammad did with Zainab when he said Allah turns the hearts and Muhammad wasn't wrong. It was Allah who made him say that and caused him to have adulterous desires for a married woman. And then... It says, and the inner self wishes and longs for adultery and the private parts that turn into reality or refrain from submitting to the temptation. Muhammad got it right. Allah determined the amount of adultery a person will commit by his eyes, by his tongue, by his heart, and by his private parts, all of which Muhammad did. That's why Muhammad said, Allah turned my heart. Zainab, don't blame me. Zayn, don't blame me. Allah forced me to desire a married woman, forced me utter words to cause that married woman to now want to have me because now she sees I'm enticed by her and then force me to use my private parts to bring that adultery into fruition. Allah determined all of that. Don't blame me. Blame Allah, right? What's wrong with you? <laughs> you ready for these comments, Sam? Yes. This is from Mahdi. OMG. Okay, that sounds strange, I have to admit. Praise the Lord Jesus. Wait, Praise wait, wait, the Holy wait, Spirit. Wait, 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 Jesus better. name convicting them. Uh, Muhammad Abu Bakr. I can't listen to all this and stay in Islam. Thank you, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Holy Spirit, thank you for taking our meager efforts and opening the hearts of Muslims. Save them, Holy Spirit, by bringing them to the feet of Jesus. Thank you. Wait. Thank you. In I Jesus ain't done. Name. A follow-up comment. Ladies and gentlemen, bye to Islam. I'm going to church on Sunday. Hallelujah. Praise you, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Everything good from the child of God. Everything good from the Spirit. Keep and, praying. That's what we're doing this for. And isn't it, isn't it amazing? We, we weren't going to talk about any of this. We had zero Holy intention. Spirit. We had zero intention of talking about any of this. We were gonna be. We we're just talking about Muhammad's spiritual problem. All right. Well, God is good, isn't He? I don't know. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. I should. Uh, I'm thinking we should we just should do a part two on this. Uh, well, I'm thinking we should. I'm thinking we should just retitle this video and then. Yeah. yeah. And then do the topic of Muhammad's spiritual problems. Yeah. Let's do it again. Later. Yeah. yeah. You know just mean? because we're further, let's do another time. But I just want to let you guys know. This is why we do it, to strengthen the body of Christ by the power of the Spirit, so that you guys never consider leaving Jesus, because there's nowhere else to turn to, and to see Muslims get saved. Honestly, I mean it from my heart. Now, if you're a Muslim who's a blasphemer, who mocks the Lord, then don't get upset when I give you a taste of your own medicine. But for sincere Muslims, no, we want you to escape the lies of Islam and find salvation in Jesus, because Jesus loves and adores you. And that's why we're doing it. So pray for us to be holy witnesses and not afraid of death to do this until the Lord takes us home. I This blessed me, right? I mean, all glory to God. That's what I want to see. Muslims, come to Jesus. Like Jay Smith says, come home. Come home to Jesus. <clears throat> the only hope of salvation. So glory to God.